so he had conducted conducted the uh, uh, michael faraday had conducted his experiments it was not only that simple there were so many other things okay he used stronger magnets he reduced their speed of movement okay made it faster then more number of coils on that second experiment from the from the coil that was generating the magnetic field again the slower movement the faster movement okay again the slower rise in current in the experiment number 3 in coil b slower rise in current faster rise in current that you can do that you'll understand why and how he was able to do that more the number of turns lesser will the uh, less slowly will the uh, more slowly will the current rise okay it becomes actually an inductor that you'll understand shortly but but you you concentrate it was not only that those three simple experiments and it was only that much time that it took me to maybe even write or not it is not that it was years and years of of research and study that led him to that but now the time had come when he should be formulating it in terms of now, now every phenomena that we observe in physics has to be objectified okay so newton says fine any two masses in the universe will attract how much how what happens if the masses increase what happens if they decrease okay so the real that is the end of it right so you have to take it to the logical conclusion you cannot stand and say i have produced uh, electricity out of magnetism how much okay so that was the next stage and before he before he defined defined the actual thing he defined something called magnetic flux prior to actually giving his own own conclusion on what he had done okay in, in a similar way you can say that that newton defined momentum before before the second law now he first defined momentum then he said that it is the rate of change of momentum that is equal to force okay so in a similar manner he defined something magnetic flux and then he came to his actual theory okay now what is magnetic flux in fact what is flux what is flux uh, what is flux no no nothing flux is another simple word in english which simply means flow the influx of water the influx of terrorists okay and the efflux that is the outgo so inflow outflow that's all it's a pure english word have no doubts about it okay it is it sounds a technical word it is not it is not okay now before he he defined the flux let us try to understand what flux is there is a window area a suppose water is flowing like this okay water is flowing through the window like this what happens what happens what happens how much water will flow if the water is flowing with a velocity v meter per second and a is the area see in one second if you consider it to be a frozen frozen ice that is flowing maybe of the same density what happens what happens is this okay a cuboid of length v comes out in one second is it not a cuboid of length v and area of cross section a comes out in one second and what is the volume of it so what is the volume volume is a into v volume is equal to a into v always remember this fact always remember this fact whenever 
you come across a figure okay which when cut when cut perpendicular to its axis hmm, gives you the same plane figure so if it's a cylinder and you keep on cutting it perpendicular to its longitudinal axis it gives you a circle if it's a cuboid you keep on cutting it it gives you a rectangle or maybe a square i am assuming that cube is a cube is a special case or maybe a square faced cuboid right so it will give you the same thing the moment that happens the volume becomes the volume is equal to the area of cross section the area of cross section multiplied by multiplied by height and it is that's why that's why the volume of the cube is lbh no other reason that's why we define it as lbh and that's why the volume of a cylinder is defined as what what is the volume of the cylinder hmm why because pi r square is this area and h is the height that's all area of cross section multiplied by height okay so so this is a very 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 fundamental kind of thing to understand hmm 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 theek hai so that is area of cross section into height and that's why the vo the volume is a into v fine a into v now now the there is a slight trouble now what happens if if this the same velocity vector was was along the plane so it was the water was actually flowing like this hmm if the water was flowing like this that is parallel to the surface what happened what is the what is the what is the flow across this window is there any flow no <coughs> no so so what do i what do we conclude that the now now you know in chapter 1 we defined area as a vector and while defining that we we were faced with a trouble this is the area okay this is the area so obviously it's it's uh, the magnitude of area vector is a so fine how should i define the direction i could have say this white board was was this thing so any any vector lying along that but there are infinite vectors that that can lie here so that's why we decided we'll this dis we'll we'll define it perpendicular to the surface but there are two perpendiculars one is the outward the other is the inward right you understand this is the this is the this is the area vector so this is the area vector if if this is the area vector one is this another is this another is this understand so so we developed some convention later but fine till now so so we started defining the vector like that so this became an area vector and we'll soon see how how useful it was for us now what happens the perpendicular the perpendicular components the those which are which are perpendicular to the to the plane of the area they were contributing the maxima that means those which were which were parallel to so in the blue i am drawing the area vector so the component of velocity that was parallel to area vector was contributing the maximum while the while the component of velocity that was perpendicular to the area vector was 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 uh, was contributing nothing correct so we write that the component of velocity the component of velocity in the direction of area vector in the direction of area vector contributes the
maximum while the component of velocity i should not say velocity i should say velocity vector vector perpendicular to area vector contributes nothing correct now what if the velocity that means the the water that was coming out that was making an angle of theta with it then this velocity vector can be can be resolved into two components okay one of the components is is v cos theta which is in this direction is it not v cos theta in this direction let me draw it in blue so it is v cos theta in this direction and there is a v sin theta which is in this direction so v cos theta we have just seen does not contribute anything at all correct v cos theta contributes nothing so so in cases in the general case where we have the vector velocity vector making an angle theta with the area vector when the velocity vector makes an angle theta with the area vector when the velocity vector v area vector a the the flux is equal to what the flow the water flow and how are we measuring the water flow here by volume per second fine volume per second will give you the quantity of water that is flowing so flux is a into v cos theta a into v cos theta correct now what is this this is nothing but but a or 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 say v dot a okay flux is denoted by a special notation phi phi stands for flux due to these greek symbols at times we find physics to be tough but rest assured had things been in in english it would have been f and since we were kind of the scientists there they they were more latin and greek people okay or at least the language was more prevalent so that's why these these have crept in so it's phi phi okay phi is equal to v dot a at the moment we understand that immediately you understand that electric flux becomes which which we denote by phi e okay that becomes e dot a and the magnetic flux phi b that is b dot a how simple is it not how simple and you should understand this if i am talking about e dot a in fact i am talking about what everything that is crossing this in my direction okay everything that crosses this window do we understand that hmm so everything that crosses so so angle everything taken into account do, you, do we understand everything has been taken into account the angle the area the velocity everything comes into picture and obviously it will depend on all larger the area more is the volume that comes out correct higher the velocity with the same area more is the volume that comes out higher is theta higher is theta lesser the amount that comes in the way we have defined theta okay we have defined theta to be to be the angle that it makes with the 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 velocity vector makes with the 
area vector hmm? and how do you measure those angles you will have to keep the two vectors co initial tails together <coughs> you put their tails together and so so these are two vectors dot product we have seen that in vectors right so you have sorry you have two vectors say like that then you shift this parallel to itself till it comes here this is vector b this is vector a this is vector b after shifting and then you take the smaller angle then you take the smaller angle you understand now for a plane figure the area vector always remains the same correct for a plane figure the area vector remains the same what happens for a curved surface for a, for a plane surface the area vector is always the same see this this is the white board so so area vector if i am representing this area then then the direction of the vector remains the same what if this was a curved surface say say the surface of a sphere what will happen suppose suppose it was something like this do you see that do you see that oh am i clear this is somehow the you understand and i don't know how to shade it somehow this is the surface the outer surface so so i say i have cut it out from a hollow sphere there is a hollow sphere i slice it like that and and this is what i get now what happens if i come to this point if i come to this point my area vector is actually perpendicular on a curved surface how do i first of all find a perpendicular for that i'll have to make my surface very very small how small so small that it starts looking like a plane a very small part of a very large sphere looks like a plane any example we living on the earth have you ever observed that it is curved hmm no while going from here to there do you have to kind of hmm go up and then you sort of come down stairs no we don't hmm even even large buildings on large areas you do not feel then when you are going to the towards the entrance due to the curvature of the earth you are kind of going up and then you are tumbling down It does not happen why because we are looking at such a small part such a tiny part of such a big sphere that it is a plane so we'll have to take out a small part of the sphere the small part of the sphere and then take perpendicular to it because the perpendicular has to be on the plane correct now there is a trouble out here what is the trouble the trouble is how do i do this b dot a here i was able to do because a was constant vector b was constant vector now even if b is like that so i'll draw draw it in say black okay so so b kind of enters from here and pierces out like that so how do i understand how do i know the b dot a why because though b is constant a is changing its its direction and if it is changing direction and since it is a vector it has two attributes two qualities a magnitude and a direction okay 